Hello and welcome to the post-production part of this tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to take this final rendering which we rendered in the previous tutorial and take it into Photoshop and make a more realistic image out of this. More realistic, more vibrant and better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image here on the hard drive. In order to do this, we have the, uh, what we did in the previous tutorial, we applied render elements to this image. So lighting, specular, reflection, and global illumination. All these elements are present in this uh, drop-down menu. You have the global illumination, reflection, specular, and lighting. Each one of this is essentially a layer, a different layer of the same image. So in order to save all these layers in separate files, what I need to do is hit and hold this disk icon until this drop-down menu appears. Here I'm going to select save all image channels to separate files, which means every file will have a different channel from this list. So we have the color channel, which is the image itself. We have the global illumination, lighting, reflection, and specular. All the channels we applied in the previous tutorial. All right, so after saving using these two diskets uh, icon, we'll save it wherever we want. We'll go into Photoshop in order to begin our post-production. So the first thing, uh, I'm assuming that you have a basic knowledge of Photoshop. If not, there are a lot of good tutorials on the subject on the internet. Uh, I might uh, make a few tutorials on the subject myself. But for now, I'm assuming you have a basic knowledge of this software. So I'm going to open all these channels we created in 3D Studio Max. Now we have all the channels open. And on this side, you have all the layers uh, that we'll put on top of each other. So we'll start with the color, which is the image itself. I'm going to magnify it so it fits the screen. And now I'm going to right click on the background layer and duplicate it. Let's call it background soft. The reason I'm going to call it soft is because I'm going to multiply these layers on top of one each other, of one another, by using a soft light uh, method. So this will create a bit of contrast. Now this is way too much contrast, so I'm going to give it a soft value of uh, the opacity will be something like let's start with 30 when I uh, click on the eye icon it uh, disables this layer here so I can see how it was before and how it is now so a uh, value of 30 is fine next thing I'm going to apply in the layer menu here is the global illumination layer so I'm going to take this one second I'm going to take this global illumination layer and I'm going to select the whole layer hit control C for copy and go back to our main image and create a new layer here and control V in order to paste so this is the global illumination layer I'm going to double click and call it GI again soft because I'm going to use the soft method to uh, bind them together and I'm going to right click duplicate and create a GI screen now I'm going to control select both of them and uh, put them in a, a group so I'm going to call this group GI because this is the global illumination group let's open this group up we can see we have the GI soft and the GI, GI screen. The soft will create a little bit more contrast. Let's uh, close this layer up for a second and focus on this one. So this GI soft, I'm going to use a blend method of soft light. And again, this is way too much contrast. So I'm going to make it uh, the opacity of it something like 20. And the screen layer, I'm going to use a method of screen in order to multiply them. This will make the image much brighter. So I'm going to use an opacity of something like 30 here too. 
As a rule, I'm using uh, values of opacity for all, all my layers between 20 to 30. Maybe in some instances a little bit more, like 35 or a little bit less, like 15. But uh, as a rule, it's between 20 to 30, depending on how the image looks in my eyes. So I'm going to use maybe a little bit more, 35, because I want the brightness, even 40. And the GI Soft gives it a little bit of contrast. Let's give it 25. And this one is 30. So this is fine. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to add a lighting layer, which will give these uh, bright areas more light. And the dark areas will remain the same. So we'll have more light in the scene. The, the light areas will be brighter, more vibrant. So when I take this image and drag it here, it will place it not in place. It will place it uh, somewhere, but it needs to be exactly in the same place as the images below. So Control Z to deselect this. I'm going to delete it for a second using the delete key. In order to place it exactly in the same spot as the layers below, what you do is you hold Shift and then drag this layer here. This will place it exactly in the same spot. So holding shift and dragging here. All right, I'm going to close this image. Now we have a new layer on top of the other layers. Let's call it lighting. And I'm going to give it a blend value of screen. The screen value usually uses the brighter areas and makes them brighter. So I'm going to use screen for our lighting. If I disable this, you can see the difference. The brighter areas become more bright than they were before. So I'm going to use a value of something like 40 here, maybe even a little bit more, 50. And as you can see, if I click on history, I can take it back to the beginning. It looked like this. And now it looks like this. So you have a difference. You have uh, brighter uh, values in the brighter areas and you have more contrast. The image starts to look much better. So this is the lighting multiplier. 50 is fine. Next one I'm going to do is the reflections. So these are all the reflection I have in my image. I'm going to again drag this here and shift drag this image into my main image. And let's close this up. Now we have a new layer uh, with the reflections. So let's call it reflection. One second. Reflections. And I'm going to give it a blend value of screen again because I want the brighter areas of our reflections to become brighter in the image. So I'm going to use screen. Now if I disable this, you can see the difference the uh, reflective areas in my image become much brighter. So this is a value of opacity 100. This is way too much. I'm going to give it a value of 40. <coughs> I'm sorry. This will give the reflections a nice glow feeling, which is very good for us. So this is for the reflection. The specular is like the reflection, but for metal uh, objects and things like a glossy wood so this will add a little bit of shininess to the image so I'm going to take this here and again shift drag to the main image and let's close this up let's call it specular and let's give it a value again of screen now if I disable this you can see the difference the wood is brighter you can see shininess on the metal here but the value of 100 is too much let's give it something like 70 and the global illumination we already use so I'm going to close it so now you have this image here with all these layers so we have in this directory the global illumination and we essentially used all the layers that uh, we exported in 3d studio max if we go in history, let's open this up a little bit. In history to the beginning, it looked like this. 
now it looks like this so much more vibrant the grass looks better and essentially the image looks better the next thing I want to do is give it a more contrast in order to do this I'm going to use the uh, curves modifier here so this will add when I use the curves I click here these are the modifiers in Photoshop so when I click here I can choose which modifier I want to add you have modifiers like brightness curves levels and more so for this example I'm going to use curves and uh, you can use manually just make it brighter here and add contrast in the darker areas it creates something like an S this is essentially contrast but I don't want to use the manual contrast because there is a very good preset that I usually use which is the linear contrast it adds just a little bit of contrast so I'm going to use this one if I disable this you can see the image is a bit more contrasted which is good for us so I'm going to use this curve modifier next modifier that I'm going to add is the levels modifier this is a very very good modifier that I use often which gives me a brightness to the image and enhances the contrast so the upper uh, value here the 255 when you take it down the image will become brighter so I can take it down and the image becomes burned so I'm going to give it a value of not so low something like 245 let's start here if I close this you can see the difference just a little bit brighter and uh, this value down here the darker areas when I take it up or um, give it a bigger value than zero the darker areas will become darker so if you take this value down and this value up this one up and this one down the image becomes more contrasted because what contrast is is the difference between the bright areas in the image to the dark areas in the image so if I give it a value of something like 15 you can see that the darker areas become much too dark so I'm going to use a smaller value like 5 now if I disable this you can see the difference you have just a bit more brightness now I want to make this image uh, brighter and a little bit less contrasted so I'm going to when uh, this uh, value in the middle here when you take it up the image becomes more contrasted and darker and down becomes less contrasted and brighter so one is the normal value here so I'm going to give it a value of something like 0.98 sorry like this so the difference here is just a little bit brighter in the sky area but you know what I don't think I'm going to touch this let's leave it at 1 let's make this smaller than 5 because it's a little bit too dark like 3 and this one let's make it brighter 235 maybe 240 like so okay next step, step I'm going to do is I'm going to add another modifier here from this stack here the modifier that I'm going to add is saturation when you add contrast to the image it naturally becomes more vibrant so the colors become more colorful but a true image a true photograph is never that colorful it, it's just a little bit less colorful than this so I need to take the saturation value down so let's give it a minus 15 for a more realistic look if I turn this off you can see it's just a bit less uh, burnt with colors because it's like it's very very bright green so I need to add this but 15 is too much let's make it minus 10 maybe something like this next modifier I want to add is brightness want to uh, make the image just slightly more bright so let's make it 10 or maybe even more 15 no less 10 is fine now let's go to history for a second I want to see the difference between the beginning and what we are at now so if I go to the beginning this is the image we exported from 3d studio max 
Now after all the layers that we added, this is the image that we have now. So we improved the contrast and we improved uh, the brightness and the grass and all without using these tools here, only by using the layers and the uh, methods of uh, combining the layers with each other. The screen method and the soft light method. Soft light for contrast, screen for brightness. So this is fine for now. Let's make this a little bit. Okay, so this is the history panel. You can go back levels, back steps that you created. And this level here is properties. These are the properties of these modifiers here. So we have the con uh, curves that we created. You can modify it here manually. You can modify the levels, make it brighter or more contrasted. Let's make it just a bit more contrasted. And a bit less bright, 245 is fine. You have the saturation value here the, that you can take up and down. And you have the brightness value. So the last thing I want to do is I want to color correct this image just a bit. So I'm going to add a modifier named color balance on top of all the other things. And I'm going to balance the colors here. You have the blue sky that shines on the building itself. So the bright areas needs to be a, need to be a little bit more bluish. So I'm going to go to the highlights, which are the bright areas of the image. And I'm going to add just a bit of blue. So something like 5 and minus 5 here. Like so. So if I disable this, you can see just a bit of a blue tint from the sky falling down on the building. Now, in the darker areas, you might have a different color. So I'm going to go to the shadows. And in the shadows, I want to add just a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to make it a value like minus 5 here. And a little bit of red for the yellow. So it's like the sun here. So a little bit of, a little bit of red. No, that's no red. The red is not good. Let's add just a little bit of green from the grass in the shadows here. So like 2 maybe. Small values. Maybe 2 here also. And in the midtones, let's add just a little bit of yellow from the sun, so minus three. All right, so now let's see all the changes that we made using the color balance in the midtones, shadow areas in the image, and the highlight areas of the image. This is before, this is after. It's a very, very delicate change. But if you see this area here and the sky, you can see the difference when I click it just a bit less red and more uh, lively and blue from the sky. So this is our final image for now. Next thing I want to do, I want to make it sharper. We're finished with all these layers here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right click on the top layer and I'm going to click on flatten image. This will flatten all the layers back to one basic layer. And now what I want to do is add a filter, a sharpen filter. This will sharpen the image a bit. So I'm going to go to filter, sharpen, unsharpen mask. And uh, I'm going to write the amount of sharpness here. If you look at the image now, if I give it a crazy amount like 500, you can see the image is way too sharp. It's posterized. So what I want to do is not give it that high of a value. Let's give it a value of like 60 maybe. So if I unclick preview, you can see the difference in this area, for instance. Let's go in this area here. So if I go preview, you can see it's a bit more sharp. Let's hit OK. Let's zoom in for a second. not that much alt to zoom out hold alt and click on zoom out and uh, if i click on history and i go back before i sharpen the image you can see the difference sharpness adds a little bit of something okay fit the screen so this is our image here so the first image was this one 
this is how we got the image from Photoshop, from 3D Studio Max. And after all we did in this tutorial, this is the final image for us. So it looks, looks much more realistic. The sky is shining blue on the building and all the changes that we made made real difference. So the post-production of a 3D image is a very, very important step. Uh, this is the, the last step and it's what bumps the image up uh, a few levels. So thank you for watching this tutorial series and uh, the next tutorial series will be up soon. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next tutorial.